going back to our forefathers uh, of this country, uh, you know, they, they had slaves. Uh, their concept, their drawing of the Constitution was one that protected them. And, to, and so their ability, however, was to compromise. Those that had slaves, we're not going to give you a full count. You get three quarters of a count for every slave you have, if he's black. And so that way, it was a compromise. We don't recognize them. We don't like slavery. We won't recognize them as a full person. But do. And so now, as a result of that, we have what? We have every 10 years, we have a population count. We have redistricting. That's a process that's going on. So there, the forefathers set it up so we can change as the population changes. Uh, all that's happening, and this is, I guess, because I'm an artist. If I'm going to paint a face of an American today, what face do I paint? And that's where we are. What face do we paint? And I think if I were to sit down as an artist to paint, to paint that face, I'd have to have a European part, I'd have to have a Latin part, I'd have to have an Asian part, I'd have to have an African American part. And there's several ways I could paint that painting. I could paint them in sections so that each one is there. I can mix all the colors together and make one face. Uh, I can make blotches. And that's where we are. We still don't know what that face is going to look like. And so it's a very exciting time. Um, Does it trouble you that they can't resolve questions in Washington? They can't, for example, the budget and the great divide that exists politically. Is that, is, is, does that occur as a result of what? What do you think? Of well, I think that's, I think that's a, uh, I think that's a result of uh, several things. So number one, the government was set up, recognized that the government was set up as a result of compromise. I mean, all of the colonists, all of the people that signed off on the Constitution uh, were not in complete accord with that. The system was set up to have controversy. The system was set up to have confrontation in the legislative body. Uh, and so that's where it's to you know that's where the controversy is going to take place. The representatives uh, were elected elected by the bodies. Now at, and at one time it could only be by men and it only could only be by white men. Now it's women and it, you know anybody everybody now who's a citizen can vote and select their representatives. Um, I read an interesting thing today, because a lot of people blame the lobbyists for the condition. And the article I read said there's only 554 people you have to blame for our condition. 435 of them are in Congress. Because the lobbyists will be there, and the lobbyists will want to get money, the lobbyists will continue the pressure. But the congressman is the one that says yes or no. And so those are the people that have created the situation. The, plot, the elected officials have created this situation and then try to convince us that they're not to blame. And you have new people say, let me come in and I'll change it. And it was the old guys. But after you've been around long enough, you start to realize, you know what? All you guys, you all created this problem. And you created it, and you have to fix it. But it's set up to fix it. My constitutional professor at law school said he believed that the Constitution of the United States was divinely inspired because it allowed change to occur as the country grew. And I think he's right. I think it, it did. And we're at a tough time now because of the economics um, situation. And I can, you know, we sense the anger from the streets. People are saying, this is not, I mean, how, how is it that we get in this trouble and the banks are still there? 
and we bail out the banks and now the banks are making money and we're still without jobs and we're still without um, there's a lot no longer are we dealing with a racial issue we're now dealing with an economic issue and that economic issue um, will only be changed once <laughs> once we get back to what forefathers talked about which was compromise I mean this nation was built on compromise and right now nobody wants to compromise and all they're doing is kicking the can down the, the street down for another two years and we've got to I well, how could the uh, the school in Guadalupe have compromised, speaking of compromised? I mean, because you had two opposing sides, right, and drastically different points of view. Uh, it's the responsibility of the school board is to find right. some point of reconciliation. Right. And did that happen? Why, if it didn't, well, here, it doesn't seem like it happened in yeah. Guadalupe. Right. Well, here, there, here, but here's the issue. And then this is, this is the valve. This is the outlet. The outlet was that you could change the school board. You could change the school board if you got people out, convinced them that what you advocated was correct, and got enough people to vote out the old board. And that's the that's the process change. Now, what you had going on in, in Guadalupe was, if you do that, you may lose your job. Oh, yeah. And that may be a denial of civil rights because I have a right to vote, and if I can't vote my conscience, then your threat to terminate me would be a denial of, of, due pro of my civil rights. So the pro so the mechanism is there for change. It's just that we that the, that the school board had convinced those most of them that we're the best thing for you, and. Did, did no. you, in your opinion, were they willing to compromise? The school board in 1971, 72? No. They, no, they were not willing to compromise, but they did accept our report and they began to, to realize that they were going to have to change because this thing was bigger than them now. Because now the LA Times had run a story. And so other people were now starting to look at what they were doing. And they found themselves out of step with most other school districts. They also wrote a counter report, didn't they? I, they Did you they were familiar with the counter report? They responded, I think, to our report, which I think we included uh, oh, right. in, in the report, and they uh, they acknowledged, uh, I mean, they, they denied most of what we, we concluded as being factual, but there was also some uh, concessions in the sense that they, they agreed that uh, they, that there was not, you know, the Mexican Americans on the faculty and so forth. Although they denied that that that, that needed to be changed. Uh, so ultimately, a politician, if they want to stay in office, needs to get a majority of the vote. When you're a politician and you sense that the majority of the vote want a certain place, a certain way, and you are the opposite, then you know you're not going to get reelected. If the people really get together and vote their conscience to vote you out. So that's what the process is, and that's, I think, ultimately what, what, what happened. And that's what, as an advisory committee, that's what we proceeded to basically do. Come in, shake things up, expose it, and then, folks, you do what you got to do. So in your opinion, was the... Was, were the advocates, were the adversaries of the school board, were they, were, were they, were they correct in bringing these, these issues to the attention of the board? Because of course the board is saying, right. this is a conspiracy. I think they call it a witch hunt. Yeah. But do you, do you, do you think that the, the activists in the community were, uh, had reason? Oh yeah, there was no question in my mind that they had, they had legitimate reason to bring this, and. The legitimate reason to bring it uh, to us was because they they had attempted to bring it to the board, got no no reaction, no acceptance. Um, so they had to then they had to get it exposed, and they needed to get it more exposed than just in, within, within the, there. Do you know if they had that. legal advice? If they had advice? Uh, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. but I don't recall there being any. 
any attorneys that testified. I don't recall it. I, I read, uh, I think, even maybe even in your report, there was an attorney who was contacted by some of the farm workers in the area. Well, that may be the that case. That was coming from the job, from DFW. Well, wait a minute. He yeah, came and he began to advise. Yeah, I think the, there was someone from uh, CRLA, California right. Rural Legal Assistance, that I think was uh, out on the fringe or was starting to get involved. I think that's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you aware that there are archives of photographs? There are archives of photographs of these, these incidents at Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo? I don't Do you remember photo photographers being there? Well, let me ask you, how extensively do you think this was covered by a local paper? And, and Santa Barbara, Maria Times, yeah. Did they well, cover this at all? You know, I don't know, I don't know the, I don't know the, uh, the newspapers locally there. It seemed to me, though, that uh, at the, uh, at the hearing and at, certainly at our uh, uh, announcement of our report, that there was press there. Um, I do remember uh, that there was, after our report was issued, that the local TV station had the local congressman um, on their uh, interviewed, and uh, he was advocating the removal of the Civil Rights Commission and recalling the report, etc. And so we were able to get equal time. And so I was uh, interviewed on that station to counter, uh, counteract uh, the congressman's uh, comments. So not only was the local powers trying to suppress this, then you had actually U.S. representatives. Yes, they had gone to yeah, Martino. Yeah, they had gone to the congressman to complain, complaining about the U.S. Civil Rights Commission coming down and disrupting the school district, etc. And so he took their their side and um, criticized the report, criticized us for coming down and, 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 quest, and threatened to have our funds cut and so forth. Well, so. he couldn't do it wrong. No. Uh, one more question. Uh, this, is a, this is not long after Brown was his Board of Education. Uh, what was, was, do you see any connection in what was argued and what was decided in Brown versus Board versus what you, yeah. the, 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 the committee, sure. agreed to? Propose? Yeah, certainly. How is it connected? Well, the Brown in, in, in the Brown versus uh, Board of Education, they they brought in testimony uh, to show that the black children did not view the black, you know, did not view the black dolls as being as important as the white dolls, and and, and so there was a, a, a you know psychological impact occurring, and, and that was. I think the same issue here in Guadalupe. The, the Mexican American student uh, was being downgraded and viewed that's really where he should be, or she should be. You know, there was no, uh, this is what was being projected that I should do. This is what, you know, I, I, uh, and this is where I was going to go. And so, what's, you know, what, what chance do I have to go anywhere else? And so it would take a very unique individual, um, a unique student, and of course parents to to go beyond, you know, push them beyond that. And, the, and it's not to say that parents didn't, but uh, you know, within the system. And then also culturally here, um, you know, in the Mexican culture, there's a great respect for authority, particularly teachers. Uh, you know, American use the calls a lawyer, lawyer. He's my lawyer. He's my attorney. But in the Mexican culture, you know, licenciado, uh, it, 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 it's you're placed in a position of authority, and so there's a respect for authority. So if you have parents who have this culture of respect for authority, um, if the teacher says your son is not doing well, your son is this is all he can do. How can I take on an authority like that and say you're wrong? Um, the concept of civil rights is not necessarily a concept that's understood in the Mexican culture. The idea that you could speak up against an authority, you know, what child would speak up against his father? What child would speak against a teacher? So, taking that culture 
and given the concepts of civil rights that the board has, they play it against you. So this is a particularly unique parents group that actually went against authority in the school and the teachers Absolutely. and the police. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. They were an extraordinary group of people. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no question about it because they were in some ways in some ways uh, taking on taking on a role that was they were not accustomed to take on uh, in their culture because it, it ran contrary to what they'd been taught. But they, they recognized enough that there was enough damage that they had no other choice but to do this and they knew that they knew that they were right and so they were prepared to face the consequences and that's a unique individual and that's what this group was well um, you might remember that later on now or maybe it was at this time of this controversy that there was a large meeting that was held and this individual Ocampo spoke at the meeting and there were a, a dozen people or so that were accused of uh, disrupting the meeting they were charged with disruption and uh, they were threatened with jail. This was called the Guadalupe 10, which later became the Guadalupe 7 because they misidentified. Uh, yeah. Those people were taking an additional risk right, right. Of, of going to jail and being fined. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, had seen, I had seen this in the 1968 walkouts in, at the, in Los Angeles where the students walked out of the schools the students who were, quote, Americanized to the extent that they knew they had rights, um, you know, walked out against the authority. Many of the parents of those students were of the traditional culture. You don't do that. You do not take on the authority like that. You know, what's the matter with you? So there was a conflict, and then what you had was, two generations, one that had become Americanized and the other one that was, no, mijo, that's not how we... Did you see that in Guadalupe, that, that there was the, the, the I did. generations? <clears throat> because I think that the people who actually went out were more were older. They were parents, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. Magaña and Echavarilla yeah. and all those 15, 15 yeah, that, people. Yeah, I, I, that's I did, extraordinary, no? Yeah, I didn't, see, I didn't see that in Guadalupe, but I, I, I saw that in 68. So for the parent, right. for the parents, uh, you know, to take the role that they took meant that they were really concerned of what was happening because it, they they were bucking their culture in many ways. It was extraordinary yeah. those those people. Um, now it's about Sal Castro, if you don't mind, just a couple of questions. Yeah. What was Sal Castro charged with? Um, with. Uh, him and the 12 other defendants, they charged them with the conspiracy to commit uh, a misdemeanor. There was a, stat, there was a, well, was a statute on the books that said, if you conspire to commit a misdemeanor, then that conspiracy is a felony. So, the is that a state law? Well, that was a state law. Could that have been done against the Guadalupe uh, community well, leaders? Fortunately, the, uh, the court in the Castro case accepted our argument that that was unconstitutional because it infringed on the right of speech and that to make a, to make a, uh, a misdemeanor a felony merely because some people have, have um, agreed to do an act when it involved, when it involved freedom of speech you cannot make that a felony. So the, the statute was, uh, was knocked down by the appellate court in, in the Castro case. That's what we were able to establish. Did he serve time in jail at all? No. no. no they Maybe picked, a few hours. Uh, yeah, when they arrested him and then he was you, released. Do you, where, would, where would records of this event, the Guadalupe event, for example, be kept? There are records. Do you, do you think that these were, uh, there were records by well, the they might, uh, but sheriffs? Might, uh, that I don't know. The Guadalupe 7? Yeah, that should be, I mean, if it's a criminal case, it should be in the courts. You know, they, they maintain those. Uh, probably on fish now, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that should be available. So what about the South Castro case? Do you think the same thing? Uh, Records available as in archives? 
you okay with time and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, you know, the the the, the appellate court case uh, was pretty extensive in its uh, in its opinion, and um, there's and it, the indictment indictment was issued by the uh, indictment was issued by the uh, grand jury. And so there was a transcript of the grand jury, the testimony that went before the grand jury, which was basically from police officers who had been undercover. Um, there probably is not much in the way of police reports because uh, this was the police were the police were involved in the undercover with the brown berets, and so um, the information came from. The undercover agents. So there should be a pretty good yeah. record. Uh, are those public records? Uh, they may be by now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did you uh, did you see the doc? Did you ever see a documentary called Taking Back the Schools? It was a part of the four part series of Chicanos because they covered that quite extensively. Yeah. Taking oh. Back the Schools. Have you seen the movie Walk Out? So it was on HBO. What did you think of that? Walk Out. Walk Out. Yeah, it was it was it was excellent. In fact, uh, was there a role in there for you? Why no. didn't they have one? No, they. Uh, <laughs> No, the, I, I talked to Moctezuma Esparza, who was one of the defendants in the case, and uh, you know that's just a great piece of history that here one of the kids that led the walkout winds right. up right. You know, doing the movie. Right. And he did a good job on it. Uh, they they did a good job, and the focus was, you know, on the students where where it should be. Um, I I will be uh, in this next month. I will be talking about the Castro case in in Huntington Park. From the legal standpoint, in terms of what what it, what transpired there and, and how that case came about, but the um, yeah, students uh, in 1960, I became a lawyer in 1960. About 1962 or 63, uh, the Association of Mexican American Educators came to me to educate to incorporate them. Uh, and these were teachers that were in LA and were just fed up with the system and they wanted to uh, you know organize begin to address the issues uh, the administration had a couple of people in that group undercover undercover oh uh, finding out what was being said so I mean that was the kind of uh, that was the kind of uh, you know era that we were in and uh, we incorporated them and then uh, you know they they would meet and they started to put together what it was that they wanted for the students and Sal Castro was one of those teachers. Sal, however, became was more uh, vocal and more militant than the others because the others see people people don't realize is that Sal Castro put his credential on the line. Um, if he was wrong, he was gone. The other teachers who were vocal. Uh, were, weren't willing to walk out because they said, you know, if, man, hey, I gotta make a living. If I walk out, my credential is gone. And South has felt, you know, if we don't do this, we're not teaching these kids anything. Why do I want to have a certificate if I can't teach these kids? So he took that big step, a very, you know, very courageous step. Um, but he put his he put his license on the line. Uh, nobody else did. They stopped at the door. When the walkouts came, they stopped. That was a good time. So he was a person that put it all out on the line. And, you know, he was successful uh, at the end because from the walkouts, then there was the community councils that were developed and then the school having to address all the issues. So when you were involved with did you get any... Um were there any threats made to you? Any threats made to you in Guadalupe? No, not the no. Name. How about after after that? How about with this case of the uh, East LA 13th? The no, uh, no, I don't. I don't think I got any. Uh, I didn't. I didn't get any threats in, during that period of time. I mean, uh, uh, you know, there were meetings. I mean, there were meetings every night. I mean, it's uh, every night there was a meeting. My kids did not see me uh, because there was always a meeting with some some group, some um, you know, lawyers group, some parents groups, etc. There was always a meeting that I was attending, and uh, I remember 
my wife tell me, uh, what, what my son would say, is Daddy coming home? And she'd say, no, he's uh, tied up at the office. So this was the, the standard response, he's tied up at the office. Well, one night I was home for dinner. And Phil says, Dad, who untied you? <laughs> In this vision, I was tied up at the office. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Thank you so much. Do you think you can take a photo as a Well, actually, I, I just want to take a little bit of B-roll. Is, is that right? It's just of your hand moving around and then maybe a uh, close-up on your eyes, okay. like looking this way. I'm going to have to move, though, okay. just so you know. I, but I don't see anybody right now. You can move, move it. Or do whatever you want. Okay. I don't see anybody right now that, you know, I'd say, yeah, oh, great. But part of that, too, is that I'm 77 years old, and so, you know, I've been there before, you know. I've been, I've, I've gone out and I've, you know, campaigned and, and, and worked for individuals, and, and uh, you know, the people I met with, they were really committed to what they were doing, what they wanted to do, and they all knew what the goal was. The goal was to get more, to increase the, over, uh, with like 45% or 50%, and here they had given the administrators a raise. I was so outraged. I got on the phone and called her from the airport. I said, Maria, what the hell are you doing? The dropout rate, I'll never forget this. She said to me, well, Herman, she says, you know, some of them are Latinos. I said, I don't give a damn who they are. What, I mean, what is this? So what happens is the system just, you know, it, 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 it absorbs them. And, uh, I, you know, at that point, I thought, man, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you put in, what you need. It doesn't matter the color of skin. What you really need is someone's got guts that's going to say, we don't give you money because when you're doing a lousy job. You know, why would we do that? So, it's just, hey, man, I've been there, you know. They're going to change. Yeah, they don't do that. I'm sure, I'm sure you know them all <laughs> Did you did you hear about that? Was yeah, that well, I, I, I recall that. Yeah, I recall there being some, the fact that there had been a raise uh, given to the teachers. Yeah, and Which, this is the right, right exactly right. right. And all of a sudden they turn around and give the to that's right schools. Yeah, yeah I remember that a huge yeah. raise, yeah. unprecedented. That's, those are the kind of tactics that they were used. I think it, they're just so adamant. Latino. Council, you know, and it was great. Everybody thought, oh, great, we got Latino council, we got Latino lawyers, and then they just proceeded to rape that city and put them in debt. And I remember when those campaigns were going on, you know, it was going to be like, well, now we're going to have our own people in there and everything. Shoot. Let me correct you, though, because I have to. It's not Bell Gardens. It's Bell. 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 My reason I say that is because my my brother was the city manager for Bell Gardens. Oh, what's his name? He didn't have anything to do with that. Yeah. John Ornelas. John Ornelas. Okay. He, he was for Bell. He was for Bell Gardens. Okay. Bell. Right. right. So I would get those two mixed up. Kind of correct. Yeah. Because they're two different cities. Right. Bell. They're next to each other. But right. You're exactly. Right.